my quote. Oh no. Good morning. Good morning. Super excited to have you here with us this morning. Um, were we here last week? We were not no, here we last week. No, we were not here last week. We were speaking, speaking at Invest Her. Uh, Invest Her. Invest Her. So landing the end of the month, we missed two of our weeks uh, and we've uh -oh. got a packed June. Oh, <laughs> uh -oh. Uh oh, tech issues. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Sorry. Look, we're trying to get you on here. It's hilarious. We, I just want a week where it's not even an internet issue. It's uh, now it's a Facebook issue. But you know what? Here, we're going to keep going because we had uh, a remarkable May where we had both of us did an, on an alternate week. And June is going to really give us some additional opportunities to stay connected and to be with you guys. Because you've got your event, which is sold out. You sold it out in two, two hours. hours. Two, two hours. hours. Two hours. Two hours. Talk a little bit about that one. Yeah. Not so, that <laughs> Mark, we're, we're trying to figure out if we're going to do a second session if yes. this other speaker is able to accommodate that. Makes sense. Or videotape it so that we can get you guys a copy of the recording. But on June 14th from 10 to noon, we've brought in Mark Fleming, who's our chief economist with First American Title, who just has wonderful insights he as does. to what we can expect into the later part of the year. And if you ever want to catch his podcast, it's called Reconomy. Uh, I would highly recommend that you take a listen to that. It's a really good podcast. Uh, and so we're bringing him in and I'm giving a full-blown market update the two of us are going to tag team it so he's going to go national i'm going to go local and we'll talk about all of the twists and turns that are happening in the marketplace but i sold out in two hours tickets in two hours and so it's a real hot ticket so there's a hundred people in the waiting hopefully doing a second session which we're would be trying fantastic. to do a second session but either way you're probably gonna have it recorded and people can watch it yes, afterwards we're gonna and it, and it won't be a zoom unfortunately because yeah. we're going to be doing it in a movie we're doing it at the landmark cinemas we won't be able to have the same wi-fi cable we would typically have yeah. and so uh hopefully we'll be able to get something out to you guys so that you can watch that because it'll be a good update and we're also talking about the last thursday of the month may 25th watch for an announcement we're going to do that market update and only uh we will record the market portion of it and have that uh, on Facebook, on social, we'll email that out later in the day. But that market update is going to be one of our Agent Ignites. We've got two fantastic speakers. So we'll start announcing that as the month rolls over and we get into June. So watch for that. The 25th will not be on Zoom or Facebook at 10 a.m. It'll get emailed out later and hopefully you'll be able to join us uh, in person. I always love those. Mm -hmm. I Me always too. love seeing people in person. And now it's I'm time a big to get hugger. out there. Gotta get, get out there. So here's, here's our quote for the day. And I wanted to kind of start us out because as you guys know, we have been through a crazy three years and it just continues to be, a we continue to try to get out of one state of being, another crisis happens that throws us into a different state of being. And it's how are we staying productive and focused and relevant to our clients in the middle of chaos, our chaos, you might say, because how much is the end consumer, uh, an electrician or an engineer really focused on what's happening with the debt ceiling. But now that is our most recent chaos. And when we expected interest rates to start dripping downwards, instead, they started going upwards. And talking about predictions, we're going to talk of the people's predictions on what they think interest rates are going to do next. Mm -hmm. So we could really see interest rates go up. It could all fizzle out. But here's ultimately, here's the quote, and this is how I got here. So we may not choose our but we do get to choose our attitude and our responses, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much fear uh, and noise around this stuff right now. And it wants to become like a, ah, it's a doom and gloom thing. And ultimately we've gone through these budget ceiling crises before, mm -hmm. many times before. Mm -hmm. They've raised the ceiling many times before, and we're going to get through this one as well. But how about we look at it from a perspective of knowledge and education? ability to forecast forward and to create stability for our clients financial futures how about we look at it as an opportunity to elevate ourselves as professionals in an environment where others are promoting fear yes how about that yeah i, I think like that's it. a great idea i like it and the whole key to this year's market is building yes. your database out yeah and finding those people that have to move people are moving this year because they have to move and not because they want to move so we're looking for yes. people that are going through birth death divorce change yeah. of a job 
yes. those life circumstances that change people to purchase and buy and sell real estate because this is a year of have to and not want to. Now, a quick story though, and, and I know you'll love this because it's two more transactions, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, I was sitting in my office. I had two different real estate agents ask appointment. So it was a real estate agent and myself. We sat down at my table and we talked about opportunities. They had come to a building investment empire class, which we have an invitation at the very end. And they didn't see how they could plan for their future using real estate. They both had a home one, seven weeks away from giving birth. Whoa. She was pregnant. Oh. She, I was like looking at her going, there's no way you're going to want to do some of the things I'm going to suggest you do. Mm -hmm. By the end, we talked about four or five different options to start building wealth through real estate. And both of them decided moving is our best option. Rent it's got a ton of equity and a two point something interest rate is our best investment. Mm -hmm. Let's move and do it again. 5% minimum down. Both of them went out looking this weekend, had no desire to move. Mm -hmm. Both of them went looking the contract. Wow. So that's such a good about, class that you put together. That's a good class. And I do say like, you're right. There's so many of the moves right now are life events, mm -hmm. but if you can reach out and be that person that sparks the interest to show mm -hmm. the vision. Mm -hmm. then you really can impact a lot of people, right? Definitely. Yeah. Well, it's 10.07. You probably should. Yeah, let's get this going. We'll fly through some of these numbers to make sure that we stay on task today. Uh, make sure we get you guys out of here at 11 o'clock. And so I can get the reports out to you uh, as we get into uh, this afternoon. My goal is to have all of this out today. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop into the slideshow. And so let's see, is that projecting the right thing? Is it? it is. It's over there. All right. Perfect. So um, keep in mind that this is for the week of May 17th through May 23rd. And this week's a little bit funky because we're comparing a on holiday weekend. And when we talk mm. about the holiday weekend coming up this weekend. And so when we talk about holiday weekends, they have in different impacts into the marketplace. We have our Hallmark holidays, which are like Mother's Day makes sense but I thought that was a pretty good holiday it was a pretty good holiday. it was a pretty good holiday I mean I did all the stuff that my kids wanted to do on Mother's Day yes. right and so uh, uh those Hallmark holidays yeah. that are like Valentine's Day or Cinco de Mayo or or um or like Mother's Day or Father's Day they sense. end up taking about a 10 to a 15 percent drop in March terms of showing activity and pending transactions. So the week following that we end up having a bump in activity so we'll see that bump in activity this mm -hmm. week. Now headed into Memorial Weekend, mm -hmm. we end up seeing that there's usually about a 30 to a 40% decline in the number of units that are going under con the number of showings that happen over Memorial Weekend. I don't know about you, yeah. but I'm going to be at the pool all weekend with my kids. And so uh, we will not be focusing on real estate this weekend at all. Interesting. Yeah. Now, so it could have been a good weekend. Yes. I guess it was. No, because Mother's Day was last weekend. Uh, no, this last weekend was a good one. The week before that was Mother's Day weekend. Got it. And so this last weekend's numbers were pretty good, yeah. uh, but they're going to take a dip this weekend. And so if you had yeah. a listing that you want to push live uh, by this weekend, I would have get that listing to market by Monday or Tuesday so that you could gather some of those weekday showings before people start to take off to the mountains, go camping, head to the mm -hmm. pool for Memorial Day weekend. But if you've had a buyer that's been really struggling with getting under contract over the week, over the last couple of months, this is the weekend to take them out. And you start to, interestingly enough, over these holiday weekends, we see larger and more frequent price reductions, which is kind of funky to see, which is it, 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 it it's is not it any of them i could not figure it out what is this display? so you guys are seeing uh a, a display that we don't even see which is the slide deck yeah display. uh so we're just gonna move forward with how it is yeah. and keep going uh and so here is it real keep in mind that i've now moved that from email that I send out mm -hmm. to you guys to page two of the report so that you can get all of your talking points about what's happening overall in Metro Denver. Uh, looking at uh, all price ranges, here's our strategy sheet that we've been building out. I've been building this out weekly now for the last three years. And as you can see, our hot spots really were, and I don't even know which screen I'm pointing at or if you can see my pointer, if it's even changing. It's not even changing on I'd the screen. I'd stop sharing and start sharing again, okay. just in case. Yep. Let's stop the share share screen screen two mm -hmm. okay let's see uh so as you can see the way that this has been building out is that we have a lot of the podcasts i've been listening to have talked about that we may have peaked back in March 
activity. Yes. We did see that uh, the rate of pending transactions declined from March to April by 10%. Um, I've seen dwindling numbers in the beginning of May. My May numbers are not as good as what my March numbers were. Right. And up a little bit more through the end of the month to a holiday weekend. So I'm not expecting this going into this next weekend. But back here, you can see in your strategy sheets, we really peaked out first week of March, uh, the first weekend in April, right before Easter, and the second weekend after April, after Easter, we really did see the odds of selling being the highest throughout the entire year. So our peak has passed. So what does that mean for you and your pricing strategy? Well, we are now seeing new listing inventory going up. And so our average daily active count is rising between three to 5% each week as we go forward and will continue to do so until September. Now our pending transaction count, while it went up this week, we're still down month over month. And so what's going to happen is it causes a shift between the relationship of supply and demand and you start to have to pull back on your pricing. So if you were being really aggressive in your pricing, Pricing strategy initially, you need to look at making price reductions now to try and gather some of that buyer activity as we get into June and the beginning of July, because after July 4th, the market completely tanks off and people are done buying real estate. By the time that kids head back to school, yeah. they're really done buying real estate and we head into our winter cycle where we don't see as many trends happening right now. But headed into last week, 4,500 available units for sale went up from Mother's Day weekend by about 10.5%. And if we compare that to the weekend prior, which ended up being Cinco de Mayo, yeah. we were only up 5% from where we were over Cinco de Mayo weekend. And it's going to continue to dwindle next weekend. Again, over Memorial, I'm seeing about a, a 30 to a 40 and in the rate of showing activity and pending transactions. So get your buyers out there, but not a great listing weekend for you. You're going to spend some extra time on market. An extra time on market means that you're likely to get less dollar of your original asking price mm -hmm. because time on market is a real deal killer. Now, what you see is that our back on markets are spiking right now. And then keep in mind that our back on markets can spike from any one of three statuses. And so it can spike if it goes from an expired to an active status, from mm -hmm. a withdrawn to an active status, pending status to an active status. And so with all of the torrential rainfall that we saw over the last couple of weeks, we ended up seeing our withdrawal rate go up and we saw more people withdraw their market to have to go through flooding issues. Right. And so it's not necessarily the fallout rate. That doesn't mean that more contracts are falling apart. That just means that more homes were withdrawn and now coming mm -hmm. back to market after they had to go through and make those repairs after the flooding happened. Uh, and so looking at uh, where we are for that with uh, the back on market rate was 245 units came back on market increase of 17.8%. Uh, coming soon's are also up by 13% week over week, which is kind of interesting. Uh, heading into Memorial, oh no, that was headed into last weekend. So yes, it was a good time to list last weekend. Month supply of inventory remained unchanged from Mother's Day weekend. We're now sitting at one month worth mm -hmm. of inventory, meaning that we're going to see less multiple offers happening in our market. Overall, the most multiple offers that we're seeing are in our inner landlock, Wheat Ridge, Lakewood, Arvada, uh, Littleton Highlands Ranch in the inside ring of C-470 along 225 Centennial Greenwood Village getting up into the eastern part of Denver, the western edge of Aurora, uh, up into Westminster hot spot that's North Glen. And so we end up seeing a lot more of those hot spots there. But and I'm such a trends. visual person. Like uh -huh. I love numbers, obviously, uh -huh. but I'm so visual. I love that chart that you do. Yes, it is so you. relevant and so powerful. Yes. Because when you're speaking to your sellers and they're questioning, you know, do you know what you're doing? It's like, yes, I know what I'm doing. Let me show you what the market is doing. Uh -huh. You know, so really to have that is yes. a lot of power. It's fantastic. Yes. So I'm always happy to help you out with that research. Those heat maps can be found in the attached and the detached residential market reports that I will send out around noon today. So that will download and it's there's about 11 different heat maps for uh, different metrics that I track yeah. in there and a zip code analysis that's in the very back of that report. Uh, closed transactions went up this last weekend by 10.5%. Uh, we had 844 units closed last weekend. Uh, I up minimally. I was hoping for a little bit more of a jump after Mo Mother's Day weekend. It went up by 0.9%. So we were sitting at about a 62.4% odds of selling. Keep in mind that for the month of May, we historically see about a 58.1% odds of selling. So even though we are seeing higher interest 
demand yes. is out there. Yes. And so what's really interesting is that we're seeing uh, overall, we'll go back to this slide really quick, new listings have been down between 25 to 33% each week as we get into May one year ago. So we have less new listings entering the market, even though we have fewer buyers, I'm not hopeful that we're going to see major gains in our inventory. Historically, for the month of May, we end up having more like 600 available units for sale or detached residential, whereas we were sitting at about 3,000 available units for sale. So interest rate gridlock is a very real thing where people don't want to move into a smaller house for more money. Yeah, They're moving right now because they have to move. Uh, looking at the odds of selling again, 4% of you listed last week in the period. Uh, we're still far from a market imbalance. And as of right now, in order to create that magical six month supply of inventory that we would need in order to flip into a buyer's market, we would need to have about 28 and a half thousand active listings available for sale. And so that means we only have 15.8% of a balanced market right now. Showings week over week from Mother's Day weekend, showings were down Mother's Day weekend by uh, 20%. Uh, the total showing count only rose by 7.6% going from Mother's Day weekend to the next weekend. Again, I was hoping for a little bit more of a pop of activity. So that means that you should have been getting three points per property per week. And so if you're not getting 3.3 shows per property per week, yeah. maybe time to consider that price reduction. Uh, conversely, we're looking at about 14 showings to go under contract right now. So if you've had a total of 14 showings and no offers, maybe time to make a price adjustment. Median days on market is starting to creep up. And so uh, back over that weekend that was right after Easter, we went down to five median days on market. We have since crept up to six, seven, and now eight median days on market for homes that are going under contract. Now, I really don't think that we're going to see the same median days on market that we saw at the end of 2022 headed into fall, mm -hmm. where we got up to 50 median days on market when mm -hmm. we were looking at that week between Christmas and New Year's. Um, I think that we're probably going to get back up there to about 30 median days on market by the time that we hit November and December. Uh, that feels a little bit more reasonable to me yeah. because again, other people that are moving this year are the people that and there's a lot of relocation that ends up happening in the fourth quarter of the year. And so maybe we'll see uh, shorter days on market than what we saw last year. Uh, price decreases remained exactly the same this week. So 25.8% of what went under contract last week ended up uh, a price reduction. And the average price reduction ended up being about 4.8% off of the original price, or about $36,500 off of that original price. So again, those $5,000, $10,000 price reductions, those of you that do $1 price reductions, I mean, just to refresh your listing and uh -huh. repaying everyone, it makes me nuts. Uh, but you're, you've <laughs> got to make a bigger price reduction than that in order to get it under contract right now. And that definitely varies by price range. So let's take a look at it. We're seeing the range. temporary buy downs again. Are you? Yes. Okay. So maybe it's the dollar plus the temporary buy down comments mm -hmm. that are coming back into play a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And so the under $500,000 market ended up heating up this last week. Mm -hmm. And so it had been slowly dwindling down since right after Easter, where we had a 77% odds of selling. It was back up to 75.7% odds of selling this last week. So this market actually yes. uh pretty dry what we had been seeing the trend overall. Uh, the average daily active count for homes under $500,000 actually fell by 4.4%, which is strange at this time of year. Inventory should be building. New listings were down by 1.3%. Back on markets, however, were up 9.5%. So again, a lot of those were with activated after making repairs from the flooding. Right. Pending transactions increased by 15.2% and our month supply of inventory dropped from 0.6 down to 0.5 months worth of inventory. So that means that we basically have two buyers for every listed out there in the marketplace right now. Uh, looking at uh, our odds of selling, it increased week over week by 3.6%. We saw 75.7% odds of selling this last week. Up pretty drastically. I yes. was pleased to see that market end up picking up after Mother's Day weekend. Uh, looking at where we are for balance in this market, we would need to have about 10,000 total units available <laughs> for sale. So we only have 8.1% of balance. So again, no sign of that going into more of a buyer's market. Uh, 77,000, I'm sorry, 77,000, 7,795 total showings were set in this price range, which means you should have been getting 9.5 shows per property per week, which was up from 5.9 shows over Mother's Day weekend, which speaks to the capacity that not listing 
it's yeah. trying to avoid that time because you're going to get a better deal if you avoid those holiday weekends. So we're looking at about 9.5 shows per listing right now. And that total showing number is just for this week alone. Just for the this last week, week alone. Last yeah. seven days from Wednesday through Tuesday every uh, looking at where we contract, it was actually 20.1 shows to go under contract. Uh, and so, uh, interesting to see that number go up. I think there were just more buyers that were out mm -hmm. there looking that popped that number up. And so you were getting more shows per property per week based median days on market crept up by one. We were looking at six median days on market uh, for homes last week, whereas it was five even over Mother's Day weekend. So it crept up by one day. Uh, looking at our price reductions, 21.2% of all the homes under $500,000 ended up reducing their price for an average of 5.3% or $23,000 off of the original price for homes up to 500,000. Now the 500 to a million dollar segment is by far our largest segment. This represents 60.2% of our overall properties. Strategy sheets for this last week, the cooling trend continues to settle in for this category. And this is our most interest rate sensitive category with about 85% of these borrowers requiring financing to get into a interest rates might have scared them last week. Go back to the previous year. When did the it start cooling down? Uh, so it so really, it was actually right after Easter weekend, yeah. but beginning of June is where we really saw the big so, transition. Yeah. And it, because it cooled off so significantly towards the end of the year. Right. And so it started spiking. Yes. Yep. Uh, so looking at where we were for our average daily active count, it came up by 1.5%. We had 2,600 total homes available for sale really good up 10.2% from the previous week at 702, 19% increase in back on markets. Again, people making repairs to their properties and then listing them again. Pending transactions went up by about 5.3% 5 with 596, almost 600 units going under contract. But this market is now sitting at one month worth of inventory overall. So again, signaling that your multiple offers really mm -hmm. depend on your location and condition of the home right now. Yes. Uh, looking at the odds of selling, they increased week over week by about a percent. I would have liked to have seen that number higher, a little yeah. bit more of a rebound in this market. But again, interest rates could have scared them off, but it was about a 61.4% odds of selling last week. Uh, looking at total units for balance in this about 15 and a half thousand total units available for sale, whereas we're only sitting at about 16.8% of balance in this market. Total showings, we set 7,795 total showings, which means you should have gotten about three shows a week in this market. Looking at shows to go under contract uh, was 13 showings to go under contract. So they were actually looking at fewer homes before going under contract this last week on this slide. Median days on market have been slowly we're at six about three weeks ago. Now we're at nine median days on market. So be advising your sellers that you may be spending more time on market, especially if you're in some of those cooler zones yes. like Lodo, just south of the airport, Sterling Ranch, 8,007 for Candelas and Leiden Rock. Even interestingly enough, Wash Park is slower than I, average. I know you said that. I was like, I was really surprised. Yeah. I was really surprised. Interesting to see that. Uh, looking at this uh, for price reductions for this week, we saw 26.6% of all the homes that went between 500 to a million make price reductions. The average price reduction was about 4.3% or $31,000 off of that original price. Uh, we'll zip through these slides, one to 1.5 million, a 7.6% of our overall market inventory. This last week, again, the cooling trend started to settle in where we had hot spots right before last weekend in April, and it's been cooling off ever since mm. then with our odds of selling declining. And so our average daily active count went up by 5%. Coming soon, we're up by 3%. 29% new listing activity this last week with 129 new listings making their way to market. Pending transactions had a nice pop of activity this last weekend, up 33% mm -hmm. from where we were Mother's Day weekend. Holiday packed homes over a million more do under a million. And so cautious with those over million dollar listings that you have presenting them to market on these non-holiday weekends, they're more likely to be out of town or celebrating and not looking at property over these holiday weekends. And it really does seem even with all the I'm watching this, the pendings is really close to the number of new listings. Ooh. It's not exact. It's been about 100 to 50 off, but it's been right there. Yep. So as new listings had any kind of pop, 
Yeah. Then the pending's had the pop. Yep. Right. So the demand is there. The demand is there. But they're not finding the right home. Right. Yes. Yep. They're just waiting for that perfect home to come to market. Uh, so our month supply of inventory for one to 1.5 million is 1.3 months worth of inventory right now. Odds of declined from mother's 0.2% and it fell to 54.2% odds of selling. So interesting that I didn't see that number increase. And that's primarily due to all of the new listing activity and the mm -hmm. coming soons that we saw coming onto market last weekend. Uh, looking at where we are for balance, we only have 13.9% of a balanced market in the one to $1.5 million range. We had about 1,100 total showings that were set, which means you got about 2.4 shows per property per week. Uh, looking at about 13 showings. So interesting to see that that number corresponds to the 500 to a million dollar mark and the under $500,000 mark, but yes. it's about 13 or 14 showings to go under contract at all price ranges right now. Uh, on market popped up. So over Mother's Day weekend, we saw 6.5 median days on market. We ended up seeing 11 median days on market for homes that were between one to $1.5 million this last week uh, for market activity. That. Interesting. Yes. Those listing market before Mother's Day weekend then didn't have that. And then they just sat there. Sat there for an extra weekend. Uh, price reductions were up drastically over Mother's Day weekend. It was 21% made a price reduction. Uh, this week it was 30 percent of what went under contract made price reductions. And the size of the price reduction was a little bit smaller, though. It was about a 5.6% price reduction or about $70,000 off of the original asking price. Last one that here is this 1.5 to 2 million. Uh, you can see the cooling trend settle in and you can see that green blip right there on my screen. That's the odds of selling over Mother's Day weekend. It oh, dipped wow. all the way down to like 37%, yeah. but it picked back up again slightly the following week. And so here we're looking at inventory between 1.5 to 2 million. We had 230 average daily active count, which was up to 12.7% over the last weekend. New listings coming to market increased by 38.9%. Coming soons were up 90%. Pending transactions were up 85% over Mother's Day weekend. So again, as you go up in price, the less yeah. likely they're going to have buyers out in the marketplace over these holiday weekends. Uh, but 26 units went under contract with an overall month supply of inventory at Mother's Day weekend, we had 3.3 months worth of inventory. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you're a buyer in this price range, yes. great weekend to get out there and to go this look weekend. at these homes. Yes. Uh, because you could get some deals going on out there. Uh, over Mother's Day weekend, the odds of selling dropped down to 37.7%. It rebounded by 10% this last week into 47.7% odds of selling. Uh, looking at where we are for balance, we only have 16.9% of a balanced market. Uh, over the showing activity, we're looking at about two shows per property per week in this market. Uh, again, it really depends on your location and condition mm -hmm. as you start to get into this million dollar segment. Uh, it was 15.5 showings to go under contract in this market. So if you've had a total of 15.5 showings and no offers, I don't know how you get a half a showing. The toe win? Yeah. Maybe it's one of the FaceTime ones that you guys do. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That's a half a show. <laughs> Uh, so 15.5 showings to go under contract and homes were under contract in a median of nine days over Mother's Day weekend, 15 days. So it ended up declining by about 50% this last week. Uh, looking at price reductions, 34.6% of the homes made price reductions and the average price reduction was about 6.3% or about 100 thousand dollars off of that original price. Uh, we do have some questions. I've got one minute to answer oh. five questions. Oh, it said no video. Yep. Sorry about that, guys. We got that all taken care of. Uh, the video is glitching. Uh, I think that was, that was from that before. Was very first in the uh, Agent Ignite will be on June 29th at Rag and Bale. So, yep, that's where that's going to be more information oh, I I on said that. 20. I said uh, date. That's where we'll get that. Uh, when does the after the summer lull? It does. Uh, the summer spring. lull happens, uh, yep, next spring, not until after Super Bowl weekend, which will mm -hmm. be actually after President's Day weekend next year, is when the market will come back. Uh, but we are nearing the end of our selling season right now. And so make the best of it and get your listings to market to, as soon as possible. Uh, is the audio cutting out for anyone else? 
Uh, I'm not, I only had one person do that. Days on market for the $1.5 to $2 million range again was uh, 8.5 uh, 8 median days on market. Uh, what does WOW stand for? That stands for week over week. Uh, looking at uh, missed it, average price reduction for luxury was between 4.8 to 5.6% off of the original price. Uh, yes, audio is cutting out. Do we have an audio issue? I don't, I would not have thought so. I don't mm -hmm. know. Video was choppy throughout. Do you think the NBA finals will affect our market in June? I guarantee less showings on game nights. And if you, they're yes. going to get their showings in before the game starts. So depending on what time the game starts, like the final game started at six, probably no showings on that one. Uh, and so looking at it, if the showings end up on weekend or the games end up on weekends, there's probably less showing activity that's going to happen in those evenings and people will be trying to get home to watch the game. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on internet and we've got the right video. So I got guys, I apologize. I don't know why uh, the video or audio would be glitching a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we'll continue on. We'll yes. continue to storm forward. And so let me close out all of my presentations because <laughs> I've got like five presentations I've been running now. And so hopefully that doesn't mess up Nicole as she goes to share her screen. Oh gosh, uh, our Q&A went up to 31. Is it all about the audio? Uh, guys, really? Oh no, here's one. Um, oh no. What's the percentage of a million to 1.5 that sold that had price reductions? Uh, I closed that um, slide. I will email I'm everything out to you this afternoon, probably before noon. This is a great question. Uh, would you recommend a price reduction before after no, Memorial Day? No, after Memorial Day weekend, because you're not enough showings in this weekend yes. to find that price reduction. So I would wait until after Memorial weekend when we tend to see a little pop of more activity coming in yeah. after Memorial weekend. It's not quite the same levels as we see throughout May, but it will be a better pop of activity because again, showings and pendings are down over Memorial weekend between 30 to 40%. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Pam. Pam's hearing us and seeing us just fine. So I, I can't explain it. We can't. So we're just going to keep going. We're going to talk about the economy because there's to talk about with the debt. And what does this mean? Looking for some sort of a reduction in our interest rates that would create more demand the second half of the year and continue to spur activity. And if that doesn't happen, then might have seen the best of it, mm -hmm. right? But if we see the interest rates drop and we see the CPI numbers, which is happening the day before the Federal Reserve Board meets again, and they decide to either continue pausing and or start dropping the Fed rate based on tightening, based on liquidity, based on the debt uh, ceiling conversations, there's a lot of market impacts that are happening beyond just the Fed rate at this point. So where that all takes us, where interest rates go, will create or dissipate demand and, and then create the rest of this year. You have to be focused on your activities. You cannot be focused on the results. I've talked to several agents who are having their best year yet, mm -hmm. then others who are hearing crickets, and then you have to focus on and not get melancholy with the fact that maybe you have less in results, so you don't want to do the activities. That's mm -hmm. where natural human behavior mm -hmm. goes, right? Mm -hmm. I, I am working just as hard as years ago. Yes. When I was 14 into the industry to build my business. And the only way to build my business is to add contacts. So yes. I am going to everything all the time and yeah. taking every opportunity right now to be in front of people. I That's love the it. only way. Got to focus on the activities. The so let's show uh, these slides really quickly. We're going to talk about the debt ceiling. We're going to talk about interest rates, the 10-year. Um, and then we're going to make sure that we do have an invitation to that uh, building investment empire class, which always happens on the second Thursday at 630. You guys will more awareness, content, and relevancy with your clients, that would be the type of class to go to so that you can start speaking to real estate as wealth development, mm -hmm. right? Instead of transactional, which a lot of you guys are doing, but continuing to sharpen your saw in a market like this and going to the events and adding people in your database and using the, and I hate to say using a bad, a bad 
uh, information, but as far as the tax and what that's doing to property taxes and affordability, capitalizing on the conversation and elevating yourself to that expert. And if you guys missed it, I know you sent it out mm -hmm. as a link inside your last Thursday's market update email. Mm -hmm. So we had the hour and 15 minute mm -hmm. conversation mm -hmm. around the property tax increases and why it happened. And it was a phenomenal conversation. Mm -hmm. Great question and answer section. Mm -hmm. If you guys did not that and you want a copy of the recording, you know, Megan had that in her last third. If you do still have that email, uh, it was in there. So you can tap on that and have those last conversations because we're creeping up yeah. to the deadline. Yeah. You got about two weeks. Yes. Yes. All right. I'm going to share my screen. Let's show this guys so much to talk about if you don't have an opportunity for a conversation starter you're not thinking about all the things that are happening right now and how it's continuing to impact your clients because we have conversation opportunities going on constantly all right so let's let me make sure that we're sharing on the right screen yeah it looks good yeah all yeah. right good deal okay so the 10-year the 10 year broke across 3.7. It hasn't hit 4% yet. If you remember the first time it did that is when we hit the seven and a quarter interest rates. It hasn't hit 4%, but it's been on an upward trajectory. And really what I don't like most about it is the fact that we had a very narrow channel working where we were really bouncing right above and right below the six range and now we broke above 3.6 and headed up to 3.7 so we're actually at 3.77 this morning so really close to 3.8 that meant rates went up rates touched percent. we were watching them megan and i uh, were together on monday and we were like oh the rates are 6.97 mm -hmm. and then yesterday it was 7.01 and this morning it's seven and now this is an average a uh, 30 year fixed mortgage rate. And it even includes discount points. So we've got to get really serious about that conversation, not alluding to the fact that, oh my, that seems high. You should talk to another lender. You should go shopping. I mean, the rates are what the rates are to some degree, right? As you know, there's going to be a little bit of a difference between lenders, but ultimately feeding into the fear or that unknown with your buyers is just creating, mm. right? So knowing where the rates advise that no that's that's accurate i've heard that rates are over seven percent right now i don't like quoting seven mm -hmm. i don't i don't do it i don't like doing it mm -mm. It's, it's very unnerving but to know that that's where they are and to have that conversation where you can continue to prop up that gain those two buyers who went under contract this last weekend we talked about rates in the high sixes and they didn't even blink an eye because all of the conversations leading up to then was about the they were going to be able to create financial independence and security long term. Yeah, yeah, it's a 6.9% interest rate today. But do I get the ability to refinance it down the road? Yes, hopefully. Do I get the ability long term? Yes, absolutely. When you have those conversations, then the rate itself doesn't matter. Focusing on payment, focusing on opportunity for cash flow, focusing on wealth gain through appreciation. But there they are, 7.03. Mortgage purchase applications did drop 5% for the last two weeks in a row. Not a huge surprise, given the fact that we've had the interest rate gains. So May 10th has come and gone. It, it's passed. Didn't right? happen. Didn't happen. What did, what did we say? What did we all, say was going to happen? It's all, not, it didn't happen. It's not going to happen. So forecasts are only good as the paper that they're written on. And of course, there were some phenomenal economists that were thinking that May 10th might be the date. And the CPI just didn't do as much good as we had another CPI report coming out literally the day before the next Fed meeting. So that is hopefully going to start coming down. And we're expecting it to. We're expecting the consumer price index to drop over the next several months. We'll continue to show that inflation it is. We know that PPI is slowing. We know that cash rate index is slowing. We know the cost of transportation is slowing. All of those things are happening. So that is giving us the benefit. But in the meantime, we do have these debt ceiling conversations. 
So the uh, several Fed board members came out all saying that if the Fed was going to raise the Fed rate, or I'm sorry, if the Fed was going to move the Fed rate at all, it was going to be it. So out and said, whoa, 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 said, we're going to stay flat, right? Mm -hmm. But of course that moved the market because mm -hmm. of course it does. Yeah. So it moved the market. And now in September where we were expecting to start to see the Fed dropping the Fed rate, the Fed watch tool is saying that we're going to stay flat and it could even stay flat through the rest of the year. And in fact, at the June meeting, there's a 30%. In fact, I think it went up to 40. There's a 40% chance that we actually could see a Fed rate increase. I don't think it's true. A lot of those people are reacting to the increase in the short-term rates, which is happening because of the debt ceiling. The debt ceiling is a problem, mm -hmm. right? Why is it a problem? So let's talk about that for a few minutes, because ultimately when these conversations happen, a lot of times they just raise a debt ceiling and there's really no hoopla about it. Mm -hmm. It's a timing based on all the other things that are happening right now, that if they don't raise a debt ceiling, that we could end up into a recession. But the uh, you've got the parties fighting it. This has become a political conversation to take advantage of getting certain agenda agendas forwarded, right? So outside of that, ceilings many times we've also had it where the government has paused i mean i'm sure you remember where fha and hud were closed down mm -hmm. usda was closed down oh, yeah. where the services were just shut down for a month or so uh, right that's uh -huh. when all this happens and when they fall into a period of, of pausing where they're not raising the debt ceiling so right now they're talking about raising the debt ceiling again which is allowing the government to create more debt right now the government's debt to income ratio is 120 percent in government that restricts our borrowers debt to income ratio to 45 to 50 percent based on the program their debt to income ratio is 120 based on the the current debt divided into it's not okay it's really not okay and it's really kind of a big deal for our kids so the bottom line on this just to summarize it and i don't want to go too i don't want to go too deep if we pass we will when we pass Markets will settle. Now, how much the, the interest rates then drop back down again is really subject to what happens between now and then. And what are the terms of that agreement, right? So a lot of it's going to be based on what are the terms. But ultimately, this affects the Treasury, which in turn affects mortgage rates and all other mortgage rates. The 10-year Treasury is the benchmark. In essence, it's the sun by which all other investments revolve. And so the 10-year treasury is always going to be the benchmark. It's the bottom blue line. Above that, you have the triple A corporate rating bonds. And above that, the mortgage-backed securities and the 30-year fixed mortgage rates. It creates the benchmark. In fact, it's the level to which an investor, a return an investor is willing to get should there be risk. A riskless investment is whatever the 10-year the treasury is. Mm. Right. Makes sense. Right. So if I'm going to lock up my money, I want at least a minimum amount of return. And then everything else is based on that. A triple A bond rating corporate might be at 1% higher mortgage bonds, a little bit higher and then higher risk bonds, even higher than that. So it's all based on that. So if we continue to push into this where we're seeing stressors around the debt ceiling and they're negotiating, they take us right up to the X. That's June 1st because they're trying to peacock, right? We've got a lot of people who are trying to get their agendas pushed through. Then you have two things that'll happen. Either investors will want more return for their risk, which is what we're seeing. All the short-term bonds, or interest rates are going up high. Mm -hmm. And that's because they're tied around this X date and there's too much risk. What if they default? So the investors are gonna want more a greater return for their risk, or you have P, uh, the Moody's and other bond ratings down the rating for the U.S. government. They've already put us on a watch. So when we go on a watch, if we drop down from AAA to AA, which is what we did in 2011, we see our interest rates go up. Naturally, we have a greater risk as a country. We have a greater risk of default. And if that happens, then we have to provide a better yield. Interestingly enough, what they are doing is to themselves the Democrats and Republicans creating this impasse, they are creating a status where our debt is going to get more expensive, harder to pay off, 
and harder to get put back into a position where we have a good debt to income ratio. Mm -hmm. They are literally us as the people of the United States and themselves more money by fighting amongst themselves right now. Mm -hmm. It's, it, it's enough to make you want to throw up, but ultimately, ultimately, God, I hate politics. I know. Ultimately, uh, this is creating a sh increase in our interest rates and could have a lasting impact should we see our rating go down or should we actually go into default. So that's where we're at. We're either going to go into default where we're going to not pay for a period of time. They're going to do some sort of premium bond insurance where they can get out higher interest rate money, but to get more money into the government to pay off their debts. They're going to prioritize their spending and remove certain benefits from Americans or from small businesses, the interest and in principal on their bonds. They could invoke the 14th Amendment, which really goes to say that the validity of public debt of the United States shall not be questioned, which really just says that you shouldn't have a debt ceiling. Mm -hmm. You should be able to spend whatever you want. He's actually trying to invoke the 14th Amendment after all of this to see if he can get it to waive the debt ceiling. We'll see how far that goes, because I'm sure there's going to be a lawsuit around that. Or they could just simply raise the ceiling, which is what they have done on many, many occasions. But ultimately, brinkmanship is this. It, this is this impasse right up until the X date, this puffing of the chest and peacocking. The brinkmanship is what is that impact going to be on our economy? If we do a, a short default, what would that impact be on the economy? If we do a, pre, a protracted default, meaning for several months, what is it? That's going to actually drop our GDP. It's going to put us into elongated recession, and it's going to create a massive amount of unemployment. And we could see where typically when you see that GDP drop, we see inflation drop and interest rates drop. We could see interest rates going up based on the fact that the risk is so high for our 10-year treasury at that point at default. Guys, like banking on something, that whole marry the house and date the rate kind of came back to smack us on this one, which is, I never loved that saying. Mm. I never even liked it because it puts at risk. You cannot buy something that doesn't fit your budget today. You have to buy with the information you have at the time and hope for an opportunity down the road, but certainly not bank on it. We have an unknown in front of us, which is creating the risk in the market today. Probability is that by June 1st or certainly by June 8th, which I've heard several people in Congress talk about the fact that it's the real X date, but they went ahead and said that it's June 1st. All right, so let's move on. So Jamie Dimon came out several times. He's been on the regular. I mean, she's a really strong bank, <clears throat> especially with his leadership. So intelligent man coming out saying that because we have multiple factors going on, we have this bank crisis because of liquidity. We have people pulling out deposits primarily not because of the banks, but because they can get a better interest rates like money markets or CDs or I-bonds. So people are pulling money out of deposits. They are creating liquidity issues. I can't call a car note due or a mortgage due just because I need more money as a bank. So what do I do? I sell bonds at a discount and take a loss on them. And then of course, commercial loan risk where you've got or commercial building owners right now who are being hit with higher interest rates if their loans are due, higher property taxes, and probably higher insurance premiums based on the fact that their property values have gone up. Now, that's not what we were talking about on Monday. Guy, the conversation, reaching out to your database again, that says, based on your property valuation going up, are you underinsured? I would guarantee the majority of our databases are underinsured. Can you help them protect themselves? Can you recommend a good insurance agent? Can you be, again, that educator, that advisor, that champion for home ownership and create that space? Because there's nothing worse than having a flood or a fire and not being able to rebuild your home. Mm -hmm. All right. So how do you present? where you're, again, advising them based on what we just all experienced with property taxes. I have to, I have to let you know that you might be underinsured. <laughs> and what are the opportunities? So all of this happening, which is creating more risk in bonds and the financial tightening, Jamie Dimon went out on a limb and said, we might even see rates going above 8%. Now, it's got to get kind of bad for us to see 8%, but it's out there and it could happen. Again, protecting our our database, our buyers, and giving them the best information and creating, you know, what is that? We've got a lot of temporary buy downs going on. Sometime in the next two to three years, we will see rates volatile. We will see rates drop down at some point, but it didn't happen. We're hoping for sure. Now, BlackRock 
chief uh, CEO came out saying that he thinks that the economy is way stronger than people are realizing. He personally has a lot of money on the sidelines and has a lot of investors who have a lot of money on the sidelines who are ready to jump back in the market. We're seeing a lot of headlines <coughs> talking about the fact that investors are pulling out of the market right now. Mm -hmm. And I think that they are, but I don't think the market running. I think that they took, they're sitting in there in cash for this somewhat of a depression to happen or recession to happen that they can jump in. Now, you're also going to see headlines where prices are expected to come down. We have to remember that the market that we're in, especially in the Denver market, don't have enough inventory. Prices flatten. I don't think we're going to see a drop in prices. Do mm -mm. you? Mm -mm. No. No, the, the drop already happened. <laughs> yes. And so if you're looking for a deal in the marketplace, that would have happened between July of last year to yeah. January of this year. Home prices were falling, but now they're because we have interest rate and enough buyer demand that's offsetting the amount of inventory that's making its way to market, keeping the market overall from a broad perspective, very competitive. Yeah. And I don't think even the raising the interest rates, because we have that interest rate gridlock and those homes sitting on the market, there's not going to sell. Yeah. So it's going to keep the prices high. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so He's got a lot of money. MBA came out with their forecast. Um, and I, I just love these because you obviously you've got to watch the forecast and the, acknowledge the expertise of the economists behind it. And then you just have to continue to live the next day. <laughs> like, right. I mean, it's like, okay, that's really interesting. What does that maybe inspire me to do and to focus more on our activities? This is MBA is forecasting a 16% drop this year over last year in our home sales, a 20% drop in our overall volume of mortgage originations, and a 25% drop in mortgage units. Yes. So. And, and that resonates with what we're seeing in the Metro Denver market. We're yeah. down in pending transactions by 25 We're down in closed transactions by about 22% versus where we were one year ago. Got it. So mm -hmm. right in line. There mm -hmm. you go. Existing home sales, we saw it, we're down 26%, but it's opportunities. New home sales were up 11%. So do you have the connections in all communities? Builder confidence is up. They've had a hard time getting to market because of the supply chain issues. But now that they've got those completions, those completions are selling quickly. And of course, even before dirt, those sales are happening. So new home sales are up. That might be an opportunity for you to expand your business in that market. Now, interestingly enough, two quarters now in a row, fourth quarter of last year and first quarter of this year, we are seeing more building starts for, for sale. So that will issue on our inventory overall. So where are we finding those winners? Right now with the higher interest rates, we're finding them with down payment assistance and first time home buyers, people that can get in the market that haven't been able to bid up on prices. Mm -hmm. And when we've got an economy that's provide additional liquidity by offering down payment assistance. And interestingly enough, right now, down payment assistance interest rates are lower than market because the market's moving so fast Take and down payment, right? Take advantage assistance doesn't move as fast. So if you're not having the conversations that we're having with our clients, the, str the strategic conversations that go, look, I know you don't need down payment assistance. You don't even have to take it. You There's a 0% down payment assistance option that just has a lower interest rate than market right now. That's something that we need to be looking at. And then of course we rolled out our movement boost, which allows for up to a $188,000 income. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. If you make that much money and you still need that assistance and, or want to keep your liquidity, we have the option. And this is a movement only product. It's a movement mortgage boost product. Building investment empire. You guys, we're going to send out the slide deck. Uh, you can click on that uh, code right there and having those conversations, elevating yourself is ideal. And then the last thing that we just want to talk about is the fact that we did roll out our soft pull. So we're doing soft pulls. You guys are still hearing complaints from clients that they're getting bombarded by all those phone calls after somebody pulls their credit. We're doing a soft pull on prequal the hard pull until after they've done the opt-out program. So we're educating your borrowers all or your buyers, my borrowers, all along the way, because through education we win. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's stop sharing, see if we've got any questions other than our in control today. Um, let's see what we got in here. 
I think we did that one. Yep, we did that one. Um, Minus one both. If a home is withdrawn due to a flooded basement, how to mark it? I'm not quite sure what that question is asking. Like, do you have to say it? Like when you put it back on the market? I don't, I'm I'm not a real estate professional. I no. should not be advising you on how to write your contracts and what you need to be just you to talk to your employing broker. Absolutely. Uh, call him Elon Musk for your connection issue. <laughs> Funny, Gordon. Mm -hmm. There you go. I'll do that. Um, you were talking about growing your database. I've been having trouble with the Lion Desk CRM, putting limits and caps on how many emails, texts I can send out time. Do you know a CRM that has a capacity to send out emails? We have a corporate one. What do yeah, you know? we have a corporate one yeah. too. And we use Salesforce too. Uh -huh. um, yeah, we use Salesforce. Yeah be bad for our kids. Uh, Valerie, we've got an incredible, if you look at the debt that the government has um, secured, it has gone up tremendously since 2011. So 2011, it continued to go up. And then in 2020, obviously with all of the stimulus packages, it skyrocketed. In fact, I think it tripled uh, in from 2020 to 2022. So to see that kind of growth of debt it's going to be really hard to tap that back down again. The government where we're not constantly fighting this debt ceiling and constantly fighting the opportunity for default. And the more we spend and the longer it goes, it's going to be more of a, a problem for our children that are going to have to then deal with how to solve for this debt. Uh, can we expect if the ceiling is not passed? Uh, so Paul, I did talk about, so we had those three options, right? If we had the short term or the long term default, we are going to see unemployment, we're going to see government services shut down, they're going to stop paying on their debts, whether that's either the bonds that need to be paid, so our, our credit rating is going to go down, or it's not paying on Social Security or VA benefits, uh, the HUD offices will close down, USDA offices will close down, services will close down. The government is the largest employer in the United States, so as they slow down and shut down, even temporarily, we'll see unemployment go up, we'll see people stop spending, GDP will slam down and the government will and the economy will go into some level of a recession that sounds fun yeah god that was awful that's Great. not the way i wanted yeah. to end Blah. this call. Uh, so Nicole, do you do a recasting of mortgage? Yes. So we own our own servicing movement mortgage. This is brand new because, uh, somebody I was at didn't have that. We have our own servicing department where we can recast very quickly after the first mortgage payment. We've been doing a lot of those conversations, sitting down, doing the analysis, buy before you sell. Um, really fantastic. I love that we mm -hmm. God, that's like the worst mortgage dealing with the servicer. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if a listing a townhome near 500,000, does it make more sense to price closer to 495 or above 500 based on data from the last few weeks? It depends on your location. If you send me an email to mm -hmm. maller, A-L-L-E-R at firstam.com with your price range and the zip code that that property is in, I can look at showing activity based mm -hmm. off of $10,000 price segments. It makes sense to price it under or at $500,000 in that area. Yeah, you guys should be tapping into that. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've got a lot of people <laughs> tapping into it. I'm on a 24-hour turnaround time right That's now. Okay. Just think ahead, guys. Uh, no I, last well, minute emails. So I started my day at 4 o'clock yesterday morning. Mm -hmm. You were getting emails from me by 520 with completed reports. Yes, I was. And yes, then I, was. I worked until 8 o'clock last night trying oh, wow. to get caught up on everything. And so yeah, our turnaround time, it's yes. not something that I can immediately if you have a detailed question mm -hmm. if it's just a zip code and a price range those take me you know three to five minutes each to go through and pop yes. out but my sheer volume of those requests have gone up because yeah. we're all it's it just depends it yeah. just depends on what's happening in your area and this is where your expertise the data that we're providing really is going to accelerate your ability to be that champion for your sellers um which is huge so definitely take advantage of that and then take advantage of sitting down with your clients myself in my office going through the strategies talking strategy eliminates the fear around interest rates because it's so much bigger than that and people are like but you're so busy i'm like no 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 this is what i'm busy 
And I know you would say the same things. Like, yes. I don't want to send you that request. You're so busy. Like, no, no send this it is to our me. job. This is, I, this is what we love doing. Remember, we don't have, well, Nicole has hobbies. I don't have any hobbies. <laughs> I, I ride my bike. That's yeah, all I have. I have. Yeah. I'm either with kids or I'm working. Like yes. those are the only two things that I do. Right. I'm never going to retire because I'm not going to have anything to do. No. No, no. Me and you will be sitting down talking numbers. I know. Just to ourselves. Will. Nobody will open one of us <laughs> Yes, you'll be able to have a replay of this. It's on Facebook. We blast it out on Zoom uh, as far as the Zoom link. And I post it in the Facebook Agent Ignite group. And then how do we register for building an investment empire? Uh, if you go to the roofteam.com and you go to events, it is right there. It's always there. The next class is always, unless, you know, I've got something going on the second Thursday, but usually it's the second Thursday. Mm hmm Awesome. Oh Just yeah. A Debbie thank Downer. yous and Debbie Downers. Awesome. I'm sorry. Well, we should wrap it up. We're one minute over, over yes. time right now, but thank you so much for tuning in yes. every week, guys. We really do appreciate you. And we certainly hope that we get an opportunity. Uh, I'm actually doing an interesting analysis this afternoon of what percentage of the agents do what percentage of the real estate transactions does the 80-20 uh -huh. rule really apply? And you nice. guys need to be aligning yourselves with the A-team right now. And you need to be aligning nice. yourself with people that are better advising you on how to run your business mm -hmm. and the information that you need to be successful in your business. And that we are doing our part to help you stimulate these conversations with your clients. And we hope that if we help you create more business for yourselves, that in turn, that will create business for us. Yes. So please keep Nicole Ruth with more movement mortgage in mind. <laughs> Movement Mortgage Before and a lot of Megan Aller with First American Title in mind mm -hmm. for your upcoming transactions. And we'd love to see you at our closing table. Until then, have a great rest of your week and weekend. And we will catch you back here. Actually, not next week. I've got a Do you? I do. Oh, gosh. Oh. Two, Two weeks, weeks out. out. We'll see you guys soon.